Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel. Thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it, and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. Today we're discussing one of the 2018 Jaeger LeCoultre Polaris core models. Now, the Polaris 1968 was not the first Polaris, but it was the definitive model. and. In 2018, the 50th anniversary of that seminal alarm reference, the Polaris has become not a tribute model, there is a Memovox this year, but an entire family, and this is the chronograph model, arguably the most mainstream of the new Polaris models and the most universally coveted. It is the most discussed of the new collection, and in 42 millimeters in stainless steel, it fits quite well. JLC was smart about how the case was crafted. It's a 42 millimeter watch that wears about two millimeters smaller. That is to say, it has both a curved and cambered case design and short lugs that stretch only 48.6 millimeters across the wrist. I've often said that a watch for a smaller male wrist 14 to 16 and a half centimeters circumference, should have a lug to lug span of 50 millimeters or fewer, and JLC did well, both with the absolute dimensions as well as the shape of the case. Now, the watch is also reasonably slim. Despite being an automatic chronograph with a 65 hour power reserve, it's only 12.1 millimeters thick, which I like, and you can see the box section sapphire, which gives it a little bit of an air of a vintage plexiglass, helping the sleeves to ramp up over the side of this one. It is a broad watch between the lugs with a contemporary 21 millimeter lug spacing. When we pull the watch off the wrist, you can really see that camber. How I talk about the lugs draping down around the wrist rather than flaring out, you can see that to good effect. The strap is nicely made. It is a Camille Fournier strap, so although inspired by Falliano, as many of the 2018 JLC straps are. This one is made in France, and it says so right on its underside. Calfskin on both sides, it has a rugged sheer cut, so you can see the layers of construction. It is a sports watch, and this is a sports watch style strap. JLC with a new generation of double folding clasp, allowing you to easily remove it from the wrist, and this is one of the best features of these new JLC models. You can easily press a trigger, I don't quite have the nails to pull it off, but there is a push button panel on the underside of the clasp, which allows you to extract the strap from the clasp. Let me see if I can do it. I would love to show you how this works, but I have to trim my nails every day for these videos. Okay, take my word for it. You can see where it says push here, you push there, and it comes right off. You can also see that there are pull tabs on both sides, so it is quite easy to undress this watch. Now, this is great because it is a sports watch with 100 meter water resistance. You're gonna wanna throw this on a NATO. You're gonna wanna throw this on a rubber strap. JLC sells one. JLC even sells a bracelet for this watch so you can accessorize for the water to your heart's content. And because JLC opted to use pull tab spring bars, there is no need to buy an expensive proprietary strap with a special lug interface. Any 21 millimeter strap will fit. The case is relatively complex in that the lugs themselves aren't purely blended. This is not a Calatrava, this is not a Portuguese. You can see that sharp cleft between the case band and the lug itself, and then there's a handsome polished bevel that actually flares as it moves away from the case. You'll note there's a thin polished bezel that runs the entire circumference of the watch, and it finds common cause with the polished crown as well as rectangular and nicely curved chronograph pushers on the crown side. The watch features a dial inspired by the Polaris 68, but thoroughly contemporary in that there was nothing like a Polaris chronograph back in 1968. A couple of modern refinements, as you can see, the bi-register chronograph, vintage inspired, but very much a modern invention with applique indices, rather than the painted or printed indices of the original Polaris, a tachymeter scale outboard nicely coordinated with the chronograph chronograph, so you can gauge the speed of a high-speed object between the start and finish of a standing kilometer, and the finish is distinct. A combination of opaline, or a frosted finish about the hour track, and then a brushed finish and a gloss finish contrasting at center and about the tachymeter, respectively. The watch looks and feels like a premium product. When I first saw this dial in pictures, I couldn't tell whether it used a differential finish on the different portions, whether it had appliques or printed indices and numerals. Having seen it, I'm convinced this is a beautiful and upscale watch face. Turn it over and we get something a little bit different. Historically, JLC has always used a solid case back 
on its 750 series manufacturer chronograph caliper. I'm going to get as close as I can here and try to bring it into focus. You will recognize this movement, not the first time it's been under a display case back, as Cartier has used this caliper underneath a display case back in the past. Tungsten winding mass, unidirectional winding for efficiency that is more efficient in practice than bidirectional. It uses ceramic rotor bearings for improved efficiency, yes, but also reduced maintenance requirements. You will note that not only can you see the movement, but you can actually see the column wheel, its levers and horns, a premium system. JLC's column wheel function selector is very crisp. And you will note one of the advantages of a vertical clutch, which this watch includes, the ability to run the chronograph continuously without additional wear and tear, plus the ability to start the chronograph without any stagger or jump. Those are the two virtues of a vertical clutch. Precise starting and stopping and continuous operation without hazard to the movement. Automatic winding, yes, but fully energized, you get twin mainspring barrel power for 65 hours. And we may as well take a look at the balance. You have a free sprung balance beating away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. So a free sprung balance allowing the regular to more precisely adjust this movement and also giving the watch somewhat more resistance to shocks and bumps on the wrist. The watch does feature hacking or stop seconds so you can stop the watch and synchronize precisely to a reference time if you want to use the chronograph seconds as chronograph center seconds. You can simply stop the watch reset the chronograph, and now simply ignore the sub-registers. You can just synchronize the watch using hacking seconds and the chronograph. See how when I stop the watch, the seconds hand halts? You can synchronize the watch to a reference time, despite the fact that it has no constant seconds subdial. Now turning the watch back over, this 37 joule manufacturer movement is tested with the 1000 hours control, which is a fully cased up test of chronometry, winding, efficiency, power reserve, and water resistance. It was one of the first in-house chronometry standards to be introduced in the industry as a full watch test rather than the COSC's bare movement test. The watch does have plenty of loom. There will be a wonderful loom shot. And of course, it does feature that 100 meter water resistance. So you are good to go for fun in the sun and splash in the surf. You can see this, the 2018 Polaris Chronograph in steel on the watch box. And I am back with the 2018 Polaris Chronograph from Giger Le Coult. This is one of the best features of the watch. Not only does it have loom, it has copious loom. Big, bright, green, and expressive. You'll also note that in the dark, the watch most closely resembles the Polaris 68 that inspired it. See it by the light of day and make it yours on the watch box.